What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a 3D mouse. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I've actually wanted to give one of these a try for a while, just cause I've seen a lot of people use them. So like Aaron Dietzen from SketchUp uses these. I know Matt Donnelly has used them in the past as well. And I just kind of wanted to see like what they were about, that kind of thing. Um, I never really got around to ordering one. So the guys from 3D Connection actually reached out to me and they said, hey, do you want to give a 3D mouse a try? And I said, sure, this is something that I've wanted to check out anyway. So they actually sent me their Space Mouse 3D Wireless Kit, which comes with a Space Mouse as well as a wireless modeling mouse as well. We're not going to focus too much on that right now, though I am finding that I'm using the wireless mouse for um, using SketchUp for iPad. So um, it's a great Bluetooth mouse that's working well for that. But in this video, I want to talk specifically about the 3D mouse. I'll note I don't have any kind of like affiliate relationship or anything like that other than um, the guys sent me over this kit to take a look. All right, so the way a 3D mouse works is it's basically this kind of heavy base and you can't really tell from this video, but it's actually really solid and really heavy. Um, it's kind of non-slip on the bottom, but it's just like really solid so you don't have to worry about it moving around on you when you're moving it around. But basically what it does is you've got this, uh, this kind of like puck on the top of this that you move up and down, left and right, and then you also turn it. Um, and you can kind of see what I'm doing, but you basically use those different um, those different movements in order to generate movements on your screen. So you can use this to control like the orbit of your mouse, the zoom, other things like that. So when you first start using a 3D mouse, it does take some getting used to because you are navigating in a completely different way, right? You've got this device that you're basically moving around on six different axes trying to make your camera do what you want. So when you first get started, they've got a trainer that actually helps you learn how to move things around. But it's got a number of different exercises in here designed specifically to help you practice things like spinning objects around, zooming in and out, other things like that. So in addition to the trainer, it also comes with a demo file where you can pick parts like this. And basically what you're doing is you're selecting parts and pieces from the model and you're navigating around in order to find the different places to click to put the parts and pieces together. And so this can be a great place to start practicing working with the 3D mouse in order to um, really start getting more comfortable with it. Because I can tell you right now, it's a little bit of a, it's, it's definitely something that you're not used to when you first get started. So you might be wondering why you might even use a 3D mouse when you have a mouse and keyboard. And so it all comes down to the way that you navigate inside of the 3D space. Like for example, if I was to fly around using SketchUp like this, I'm doing a lot of orbiting and then stopping, zooming in, orbiting, panning. Like it's kind of a jarring experience, right? From a, from a viewer standpoint. So if you move around with the 3D mouse though, notice how you get a much smoother, easier to watch experience. So it's much easier on the viewer to watch somebody navigate inside of a 3D space like this using a 3D mouse, as opposed to using the kind of jarring, zooming and everything else. So that's really the benefit. And you might've noticed that like Aaron from SketchUp uses a 3D mouse in a bunch of his tutorials. And um, the way that his navigation looks inside of those tutorials is really good. Um, it's really smooth. Um, it's really easy to watch. So that's probably the biggest thing is just kind of smoothing out this entire navigational experience. This does also give you a little bit more control, right? So instead of me moving my mouse around and like frantically zooming into different places and doing things like that, this allows you a lot more control on the up, down, left, right, forward, back of your, uh, of your actual navigation inside of your 3D space. So it's something that, at least in my opinion, um, really does make for a better viewing experience. Now, some of the drawbacks of a 3D mouse. So I'd say one of the big drawbacks of using a 3D mouse is you do have to take your hand off of your keyboard in order to use it. So if you do something like, um, if you wanted to like draw in this space, right? Notice how I'm having to move my hand from the 3D mouse to my keyboard to start using those shortcuts in order to model. This can lead to you having to move your hand off of the mouse, back to the keyboard, back to the mouse in order to keep navigating. So that is something to be aware of. Um, the other thing is, so there is definitely a learning curve 
to this. So even now you can tell because I, I've just been working with this a little bit and I'm kind of getting used to it. Um, it. It really does take some kind of wrapping your brain around the way that it works. I mean, it makes a ton of sense, right? Um, you know, you move it left and right and your camera moves left and right. You uh, turn it in order to orbit. You pull it up or push it down in order to move up and down. So like conceptually, it makes a ton of sense. But um, actually like learning how to do it does take a little bit of practice for sure. Um, now there are a number of different things that you can do from a control standpoint in order to adjust the way that this works. And that's one of the cool things about the way that the mouse works is whatever program you have selected, notice how it's going to pop up whatever is active in the 3D space. So for example, um, in if I click on Chrome, right, like this is the SketchUp forum right here, if I open up the settings for the 3D mouse, notice how this shows me the settings for working in Chrome. So you can actually use the 3D mouse in multiple different programs. We're gonna check it out in Twin Motion in a minute, but notice how if I click on SketchUp and then click back into this, it now shows me Trimble SketchUp and it gives me, first off, this speed option, which by the way, when you first get started, you're gonna to wanna to crank the speed down um, so that you can, uh, it gives you a little bit more margin for error in the way that you move around. Um, you can crank it back up once you've practiced a little bit, but you're gonna to wanna to start off right there. But then there's also a number of advanced settings in here that you can adjust that are going to adjust your different modes. So for example, right now we're in object mode. So object mode is one of the navigation modes um, that you can use in order to fly around, but there's others, like for example, this helicopter mode. So that one is going to change the way the 3D mouse works. So that one works in a little bit more, um, I would say an intuitive way. So it is almost like you're a helicopter flying around in the sense that now your navigation does a lot more like forward back and when you, uh, when you turn, the 3D mouse, so when you move it from left to right, it kind of like rotates around where your camera is in the 3D space rather than trying to orbit around your model. So what that does is that really gives you a little bit more control over everything because the orbit can get a little bit um, a little bit difficult to use when you first get started. But with the helicopter mode, things are a lot more intuitive because you're more controlling forward, back, left and right, and you don't have to worry about what this is orbiting around. So if you do get a 3D mouse, and you find that you're having a little bit of trouble with uh, the navigation, um, you can definitely switch that navigation mode and um, it's going to make your experience a little bit better, at least in my opinion. There's a number of other things that you can adjust in here as well. So for example, if I toggle over here, you can adjust the speeds individually. So for example, let's say I was to put this back into object mode, but I find that I'm getting a little bit out of control on the orbit. Well, what you could do is you could crank the speed of the um, turns. So like this one, for example, you could kind of crank that speed down for these three options. And notice how now it's gonna move really slow. So my zoom in and out are still fairly fast. My up and down are fairly fast, but the other ones are really slow, which gives you a little bit more, uh, a, little more a little bit more time to react when you're navigating inside of the space. Then once you get a little bit more familiar with it, you can come in here and you can adjust these back up like this. So um, the way that you navigate around is really customizable, which is cool. So you get a lot of control over the way that the mouse is going to work. So another thing that this offers is there's buttons on either side of the 3D mouse. And what those are gonna do, so if I click on them, they're gonna pop up a menu. So I can set those buttons to give me this little pop-up menu right here where I can really quickly do things like fitting um, to my screen or going to a top view, other things like that. The one on the left gives you access to undo and redo as well as a virtual numpad, which allows you to click and add values in your scene if you decide that you wanna do that. So um, you can use this in order to pop up that menu. Um, you can also though, um, if we go back to our properties real quick, you can also set what those buttons do. So for example, if you didn't want this to pop up those tools, there's other things in here that you can make that do instead. So you could make it do like an undo and a redo on the left and the right. You could really make this um, do any tool that you want. So you can also set them to open up applications or um, to align with things um, on your keyboard, so different keys on your keyboard. So you could basically make the left and right buttons um, actually align with uh, like shift or control or something like that. So again, it does give you a lot of control over what the 3D mouse can do. So like I said, 
this works in multiple different programs. It doesn't just work in SketchUp. So like for example, let's say that you wanted to fly around in twin motion. This tool is gonna to give you the ability to do that as well. So you can use this to fly around in your rendered spaces. And I think this gives you a lot smoother experience inside your rendered spaces as well. So it gives you a ton of control over this. So I do find the navigation in twin motion um, to me just feels a little bit better. Now, I'm not sure why that is, but for whatever reason, the way that it's moving around in here just feels a little bit more intuitive to me. That might just be a like completely mental thing, but you can use this to do things like flying around in your rendering software as well. So I think I can see myself using this for presentations and um, things where you want that smoother navigation inside of something like a rendered space like this. So it just gives you a smoother, better experience, and it does give you a little bit more control over your camera movement than you would have otherwise. So I can totally see you using this for moving around in a program like Twin Motion as well. All right, so probably the big question that everybody would ask is would I recommend a 3D mouse? And I think the answer right now for me is maybe. And again, I've just been using it for a little while. Um, I don't see myself using it when I'm actually modeling day to day. So when I'm actually working in SketchUp and drawing things, I don't really see, see myself using this just because I would have to remove my hands from the keyboard um, so many different times, right? To go to the 3D mouse and then come back. And then um, it, it would just be a little bit too much um, back and forth for me, I think. But I think uh, with the smooth movement and other things like that, I think for presentations, I think for navigating around a model, other things like that, I think I could definitely see myself using, using it for those things. If I was recording videos out of my SketchUp model and I wanted them to be smooth, I think this definitely gives you a much better form of navigation than the keyboard and mouse combo that we typically use. So now I will say when you go around and look at the different videos about 3D mice, there are people that absolutely swear by their 3D mice. Like they will not use 3D without a 3D mouse. It's just become a part of their workflow. So I know Aaron over at SketchUp uses his all the time and he absolutely loves his 3D mice. So I think it's gonna be kind of a person to person type thing. Um, my use case in this particular situation would be in situations maybe where I'm not doing a whole bunch of heavy duty modeling, but I want that smooth movement. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Do you use a 3D mouse? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.